Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. I'm in the studio. We're live. You know what to do by now. Get involved in the chat and the comments. We're going to be covering all the latest Manchester United news. Not just the World Cup. We'll be getting into that. But also what is going on outside the World Cup. If you can believe there is any news that doesn't involve the biggest tournament in the the world, obviously, that's why it's called the World Cup. Um, straight away, some people in the comments. Yeah, we are going to be talking about Cody Gakpo. We're also going to be giving you an update on Marcus Rashford's contract situation, a David De Gea update. There's some rumours or stories around Cristiano Ronaldo. Obviously, where would we be without that? So make sure you are all getting involved in the chat. Uh, Awal Zaman says, um, Messi, Messi, Messi. Yes, Messi is already off the score sheet, on the score sheet even. Not off the score sheet off the mark and on the score sheet this morning with a goal, a penalty against Saudi Arabia. VAR, inconsistent again. We saw that foul. I don't know if you've seen this, what's happened this morning. Um, Saudi Arabian kids got his arms around one of the Argentinian players. Um, a penalty is given. Very similar. It seems quite similar to the incident on Harry Maguire's day where a penalty wasn't given. So we seem to be having these same sort of arguments, discussions around consistency or inconsistency. Uh, Danny Inn says, morning, Jay. Um, Jamie White says, morning, Jay. <laughs> Happy says, Go good morning, Jay. Great to see this beautiful bald head. I'm presuming it means bald, but it might mean bald. It might, I think I've got a very bald head. Um, yeah, loads of people saying morning. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tom Connell, well, Jay, looking fabulous, my man. Thank you, my brother. Uh, we'll get straight into it anyway, because we've got quite a few stories to talk about. So we talk about Harry Maguire, for starters, because Harry Maguire, um, it was a bit weird yesterday, wasn't it? I thought Harry Maguire had a good game. He hit the bar with that header. He um, set up uh, Bukayo Saka for a goal. Um just before, though, just, just towards the end, just before he came off, um, Iran got a goal and he looked a little bit sort of lethargic, didn't he? And then he, he had this incident where he got substituted. They were doing all these sort of, you know, touch your nose sort of things. It looked like he might have had a concussion. Uh, you can see there from David Ornstein, there's a bit of a, uh, well, there is a tweet there. It says, Harry Maguire's substitution in England victory over Iran resulted from him feeling unwell and was not related to concussion. Asked afterwards if defender was okay, he said he should be. Apparently it signaled just before the goal that he wasn't, um, he wasn't feeling right. And when you know, you whatever we were at the time, was it 5-1 or whatever, or I can't remember the score. So we were comfortable. We'd won the game. There's no point in risking him. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what that is. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. It might have just been a little bit, I don't know, fatigue, dehydration. Who knows? I don't know. I don't want to start speculating. Obviously something wasn't right because he signaled to the bench and then they were doing all these tests. But at least we know it's not concussion. Um, and hopefully he should be ready. I'm back in, in the action um, for the game against the USA on Friday. Let us know in the comments what you thought about um, England, about, not, I know this is a Manchester United channel, so let us know what you think about, what you thought about the Manchester United performance. How did you think everyone got on? I thought it was a pretty positive afternoon, wasn't it, for, for, from a Manchester United point of view. We had Harry Maguire, obviously. Um, playing well, Luke Shaw playing well. I think he assisted one of the goals. I think he assisted Jude Bellingham's goal. And Marcus Rashford coming on, and within what about twenty seconds it felt like getting his first World Cup goal. So that was a positive um, one as well. So yeah, from a United point of view, very positive. From an England point of view, if you care, some of you don't. Um, England obviously with a big win on the opening on the opening match. So yeah, looking good. I think we can all agree that the person responsible for that big win is Eric Ten Hag. He's getting the best out of these United players, and that's what counts. Um, right, on the Marcus Rashford front, these, there's a talk of him getting a new deal. We know that Marcus Rashford, um, I think he's he's got is it a year left on his contract, something like that. And there was this talk of, um, will he get a new deal? Will, will Eric Ten Hag or will the Manchester United um, offer, offer him a new deal? You can see there, uh, Manchester United plan to offer Marcus Rashford a new contract, even though they also have the option to extend his current deal by one more year. Yeah, last year, there was talk that maybe... Ma Excuse me, there's some sort of alarm going off there, dearie me. Well, that's handy, isn't it? It's, it seems as though the, the fire alarm is going off. So... I don't know what's going on there. Joe's gone to have a look. Obviously, you can hear that. It is absolutely horrendous. Um, <laughs> fire, what fire? Shall we stay in till it gets warm? Um, no fucking good sense. Get out, Jay. There's a fire. Jay's on fire. Yeah, there's a, there's a fire alarm going off. I don't know if it's a fire or not. 
we're gonna go joe's gone to do a bit of wrecking so hopefully um it won't be anything too serious it might be that we have to evacuate if we do if we have to cut this short we'll uh, we'll come back a bit later on we'll do one um at 12 o'clock or something because obviously i don't want to put you guys through through all this hopefully we'll have an update in a minute um as to what is going on because that is doing my head in i can't imagine what it's doing here joe's back here what's the script what's the latest everyone's evacuating the building so joe's there we might have to evacuate the building we're gonna have to evacuate the building right so we're gonna cut this short we're gonna come back we'll do another one at midday we'll bring joseph in mm. me and joe will have a little bit of a chat at 12 o'clock or something hopefully that'll have ended just a short one this morning thanks to everyone who got involved in the chat and the comments uh when we come back at 12 we'll go through some of the other stories that i had to talk about we'll go through the <laughs> the cody gapo story yeah brings back memories that um we'll go through the cody gapo story we'll talk about marcus rashford's contract we'll talk about david hayes contract and we'll talk about potential suitors for cristiano ronaldo but we're gonna call it short there make sure uh, oh, oh no we're not yes as you were as you were thankfully fire down. ethan's put the fire out thank you ethan to the rescue hey eh? he's the hero we all needed there you go just a normal tuesday morning in the stretford paddock towers that was exciting says mangoa uh, yes it was <laughs> happy says be safe lads thank you we are safe we're we're all right right where was i marcus rashford his contract yep it looks like he's going to get offered a new deal united could extend it by a year but it looks like he is going to be offered a new deal now listen I'm always a little bit wary when players at a purple patch and you go, oh, they're going to get a new deal. And we've done it before. We did it with Nemanja Matic when he, he played really well for a couple of months and we gave him a three-year deal. We've done it with one or two other players. But it's a bit different with Marcus Rashford because he's he's scored a lot of goals for Manchester United. You know, he's had seasons where he's been 20-plus goals. I think he'll be 20-plus goals again this season. And you look at him and you think, okay, he's 25 years old. He's still got a lot to offer. Obviously, he came through the academy. He's a player that didn't cost us anything. Has always been a you know a big part of sort of Manchester United since he made his debut. So I don't have a problem with him getting offered a new deal. You might look at you go, it might go, okay, he was pretty poor last season. Is this not a bit of a gamble? But overall, I think when you look at Marcus Rashford's time at Manchester United in its entirety, he has been a big player for Manchester United. And I think he's got another level to reach. I do. I think if he finds a little bit of consistency and if, he, if Eric Ten Hag can get a tune out of him, and so far so good with Marcus Rashford under Eric Ten Hag, then we could see Marcus Rashford doing some really big numbers and having a bigger, even bigger impact at Manchester United. I think that's the only sort of main criticism you could have of Marcus. Sometimes he doesn't have that consistency. Sometimes he does miss chances that he should take. But on the flip side to that, we've seen it this season already. He scored quite a few goals. Eight goals, I think, for Manchester United this season. Also, obviously, got on the score sheet for, for England. So, I haven't got a problem with someone like Marcus Rashford being offered a new deal, especially at the age of 25. It's not like we're giving a 31-year-old a three-year deal who's had one good season for us. We're giving a player who's been here, what, since came through the ranks about 2016, was it? Around then. Um, and, you know, has shown this season that he's back to his best, hopefully, as well. We can see even more from him. So, yeah, let us know in the comments what you think about that. A new deal for Marcus Rashford. Just on that front, does it say how long the deal is? Um, it says, yeah, it just says, that even though his current contract expires in 2023, nothing is expected to end next summer. So they've got an option. They can extend it for another year, but then offer him a new deal as well. So, yeah, let us know what you think about Marcus Rashford getting a new deal. Um, get involved in the comments. Uh, Stuart Thomas says, sorry I'm late, Jay. Hope you're well, buddy. Um... What? Someone's saying like a turtle. How rude. Um, Jokoya Trot says, Ethan with the last minute winner. Mangoa says, Ethan is Batman. Yeah, a lot of praise for Ethan for dealing with that fire. Well done, Ethan. You smashed it. Absolutely. To the rescue. Uh, put his fireman's outfit on. Got his um, got his old pipe out and dealt with it. Um, right. Should we talk about Cody Gakpo? Because, <laughs> yeah, says Joe shouting, yes. Let's talk about him. Cody Gakpo, who scored last night, didn't he, for... Um, for the Netherlands against Senegal. Um, they sort of went, well, they go through, not through, but they won with two late goals against um, the Neve uh, against the Netherlands, against Senegal. Was it, I think it was Alan McCoy who was sort of criticising him a little bit, wasn't he? Saying, oh, United are in for him, I don't, don't know if he's all that, and then he went and scored. Um, there has been this link with Manchester United for a little while now. We're linked with basically everyone, aren't we, who's based in Holland or has any affiliation with Holland. Um, but 
there seems to be something in this. Now, we've it's come from Calcio Mercato, so we've done a bit of sort of um, Google Translate. So you can see there, it, it, you know, when you read it, it doesn't make much sense. But I think if you go there, you see it sort of says, Liverpool and above all, Manchester United have taken more information than others, receiving the answer that for less than 45 to 50 million euros, the player will not move in January. So... For less than 50 million euros, he's not going to move. So obviously from that, you can take, okay, if you spend more than 50 million, hopefully you can get him. 50 million euros for a player like Cody Gakpo, who scored 14 goals this season, um, I think in all competitions. Not in, I think that's um, for his club. I think he's got nine in the uh, River Divisi um, and 12 assists as well. So his numbers there are pretty phenomenal when you look at it. He's also been banging them in, I think, in the, um, in the Europa as well. So... Let me just have a look here at his, his stats. Yeah, 14 goals. I mean, yeah, 14 appearances in the Dutch league, nine goals, 12 assists. Um, Europa League, five appearances, three goals, two assists. Yeah, I mean, and the Johan Cruyff trophy, or whatever that is, um, one goal, two assists. I mean, and he's got a goal in the World Cup now as well. So he's obviously doing very well. United interested in him. We've been linked with him for quite some time. There's talk that... We could go for him in January. They're saying, or oh, Calcio Mercato reporting that you can't get him for less than 50 million euros. I wouldn't expect to get him for less than 50 million euros, to be brutally honest. You know, he's a 23-year-old. He's banging in the goal. He's obviously doing very well. He's got himself in the Dutch side and has already got off on the score sheet there in the World Cup. So with those sorts of numbers, and, and when you're Manchester United and you're coming in for a 23-year-old, you're never going to pay less than 50 million euros for a player of that calibre and a player of that age, you know, who's obviously so effective. If we can get him, for something around 60 million euros or 55 million euros, whatever, that would seem like a good bit of business. I know it's a massive if. If you're going towards the sort of Anthony price tag, 100 million or whatever, that's when I think Manchester United might not go for it because they might go, we haven't got that kind of money. We have because the Glazers are bleeding us dry. We know we've always got money, but the, the club might not be willing to spend that after we've just spent big in this summer transfer window. The fact is we need to replace Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know what is happening with Cristiano Ronaldo in terms of where he's going to go, although we'll get to a link in a minute, but it doesn't look like he has a future at Manchester United. We've all seen that interview. I don't need to keep you know going, going over it, but it's obvious from that, and, and the, the comments he made about it, and how the comments he made about the club, Cristiano Ronaldo definitely sees his future lying elsewhere other than Manchester United Football Club. So with that in mind, the fact that we've only got Anthony Martial, who's been pretty much injured all season, and Marcus Rashford, who can play down the middle, but you could argue his, his sort of best position is, is coming in from the left-hand side. We are short of numbers up front. I don't think Charlie McNeil is quite there yet. We could do with another attacker. Cody Gakpo would seem to fit a bill. He could come in and do a job. Let us know what you think. Are you a big fan? Do you think he's good enough? Should United go for him? Uh, we asked the question on our Twitter earlier. We said how much you think Manchester United should pay for Cody Gakpo. I'll just bring that up um, because, you know, we've been linked with him obviously heavily and I want to see what everyone thought about that. Uh, we did a tweet, if I can find it. Um, how much you think he's worth, sorry, was the was the question. Um, Cy Whitworth said worth 30 million what will they want from us 60 million plus um, Frank Turner said now he scored in the World Cup probably 80 million um, someone said two pints and a ride to Carrington 50 million euros I think Fab said said Adam Rhodes uh, 35 million before the World Cup 89 million after the World Cup uh, said J3MZ yep I mean once you start scoring goals in the World Cup your value does increase and it's a bit of a shame because sometimes that can be a little bit misleading no disrespect to Senegal, you know, I'm sure they're a good team, but it's like, you know, you can score goals against World Cup opposition that aren't necessarily as good as some of the teams you'll face in the Premier League. So it can be a little bit misleading. Um, let us know in the comments what you said. Uh, King Dino says, like the stream. Yeah, hit that like button. Hit the like button. Um, Sean lives, he says, Jay's grafting hard on the channel. Good to see you, man. Thank you, brother. Um, Beers says, Tony in problems now, so don't think he would be a smart choice at the minute. Yeah, Ivan Tony is a player that has been with United, a player that a lot of us like, including myself, but he's got these problems, and he, with the betting scandal he's involved in. So don't know if that is going to put um, Manchester United off getting involved in someone who we don't know, you know, is he going to get a ban? He could have been in all sorts of trouble. I'd be very surprised if Manchester United went in for Ivan Tony with all that hanging over his head. Get involved in the comments and the chat and let us know what you think, though. You may well disagree. Um, right, should we talk about what we've got next on my list? Excuse me. Um, yep. Yeah. The David De Gea. Um, there's a story here that David De Gea could end up going to Barcelona. Um, you see here, 
Um, I mean, David De Gea has been linked with everyone, hasn't he? There was a time when he was linked with sort of with all the best clubs were sort of interested in David De Gea. Um, but the latest story, I think, sort of links him with. Um, let me always get that translate. Yep, yep. Um, as you can see there, uh, a real whirlwind, which would also concern Ter Stegen and. De Gea, the former could end up at Bayern Munich, while the Spaniard is on the radar as Xavi's Barcelona. If this double operation were to materialise at that point, an assault on Szczesny in the summer by Manchester United could be ruled, not ruled out, sorry, given that this option tickles the imagination of the Red Devils. Juve's war. Now that's been translated, so as you can see there, some of it is a bit like, what are you on about? Um, I mean, tickles, what's that say? It tickles the imagination. I don't think I've ever heard that one in a transfer rumour story before. You know, Tickling his imagination. Can you stop tickling my imagination, please? I don't like it. Um, I don't see uh, Wolchek Szczesny coming to Manchester United, by the way, at all. I don't think that's going to happen. Could David De Gea go to Barcelona? Possibly. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's it's not beyond the realms of, of, of likelihood, is it? I don't know if it is going to happen. I think the jury's still out with whether... Eric Ten Hag wants to keep David De Gea because there's these sort of rumours that he was going to have a look at him this season and make his mind up. There's other stories saying that perhaps he's not interested in him. He doesn't want to keep him long term. He just needs him for the short term because obviously with the money we spent and goalkeeper not being a, a massive priority. I think David De Gea has done all right this season. I think he's, you know, he's had some good games. The West Ham game in particular, Old Trafford, I thought he played very well. I think there's still slight question marks of whether he is commanding enough of his, of his area and also good enough of his distribution to be a, an Eric Ten Hag player. We'll have to wait and see, but I wouldn't be overly surprised if either happened. I know that sounds like sitting on the fence, but if David De Gea signed a new deal or was, was stayed at Old Trafford, we're hearing that he would be willing to take a pay cut as well. That wouldn't surprise me. You think, okay, that's not like what, what is going on? How has this happened? That a player that's one player of the year, whatever, four times, whatever it is in six years, has you know signed a new deal at Manchester United. Also though, if Eric Ten Hag was to say, do you know what? He's not for me. He doesn't quite suit my style. Move him on and bring someone else in. Again, would that be a shock? I don't think it would be. Get involved in the comments and let us know what you think. Um, and make sure as well you are liking the video and subscribing to the channel. There's a, an intercall. Uh, an intercall? An intercall? That's not even a word. I don't even know what I'm on about. There's a link in the chat. Intercall. Get, make sure you're clicking on that link and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Music Ali says, Morning, Jay. Your head looks extra shiny today. Aha. Uh -huh. um, yep, thank you. I... Appreciate the sentiment. Uh, Stuart Thomas says, you love it, Jay. Um, yes, I do, whatever that means. You love it, Jay. Yep, I do. Just one final story I want to get into, and that's Cristiano Ronaldo. There's a st I think this is in the evening news um, that he's been linked with a move to, I think Fiorentina uh, coming in for him or, you know, interested in him. Now, the trouble with Ronaldo is there's so many different stories that linked with him. Um, I think Stretty News had this yesterday, uh, returned to Italy, being uh, with, sorry, returned to Italy, um, being on the counts for Ronaldo. Fiorentina, apparently interested in him. I don't know how concrete that interest is. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if they can afford his wages. I don't know if he's willing to go to Fiorentina. No disrespect to them, but they don't feel like one of the sort of the top level of clubs that perhaps Cristiano Ronaldo will be looking at. I might be wrong. And he might have to just accept that that's where he could end up. He's no longer going to go. He's not going to go. There you go. You can see there. Fiorentino willing to offer Cristiano Ronaldo an exit route from Old Trafford. Real Madrid also recently said that they were interested in bringing him back to the Bernabeu. So he's not going there which I don't think is any a big surprise to anyone. I didn't expect him to go back to Real Madrid, to be honest with you. Um, now Fiorentina could be interested in him. He's going to go somewhere, and I can't see him staying at Old Trafford. Maybe he does have to go to Fiorentina. Maybe that is a, an, an option for him. Maybe he goes to somewhere... Um, maybe he does go to somewhere like the MLS, or somewhere, you know, that, that has... Um, you know, doesn't have the, the sort of the kudos or the, the, the level of, of a, a European club, but has the money. Maybe that's his next move. Let us know what you think when it comes to Cristiano Ronaldo. Where do you think he's going to go? Does anyone think he's going to stay? Is that is he just done now? Because it doesn't seem to be many people that think he is going to stay. I just think he's, I think he's done. Um, 
Eon Ryan says, looking forward to seeing you and the lads in Dublin. Yes, we have got an event in Dublin on the 30th of December. Uh, myself, Adam McCullough, Joe Smith, Stephen Housen, and Brian McClare, Chuck it, is going to be there. Um, we're doing an event, a live event, obviously. There's a link in the description there. You can see Stretford Paddock in Dublin. Uh, we'll throw a link in the chat as well, so you can get, you know, because I know some of you are on the chat and you can see there. Get involved if you can. If you can get over to Dublin or if you're already there, come and join us. It's our first live event at Stretford Paddock and we're looking forward to it. You know, it's going to be a great night. Chucky's great. I've done a few events with Chucky before. He just doesn't hold back. He'll tell you anything. Honestly, he really does. He's, he's not one of those players who's just a bit, you know, ex-players who toes the party line or doesn't want to say anything too upsetting or doesn't want to, you know, let you know what went really went on in the dressing room. He'll tell you anything. So, do come down if you can do. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to meeting some of you guys over there in Dublin as well. Uh, going to wrap it up there. Thanks to everyone who got involved in the chat and the comments. Uh, we will be back later on. But Stephen Housen, who's over in Qatar, has been chatting to Laurie Whitwell from The Athletics. So we're going to have that video up later on this afternoon. Apologies for the fire alarm that sort of sent us all into meltdown. But big shout out to Ethan who, who managed to deal with that fire. Absolute star. I'll be um, nominating him for a Pride of Britain Award very soon. Make sure you are hitting like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jay Motte. This has been the Paper Talk. Thanks for watching.